sky dancers. The air that surrounds us is the same air within us. We breathe through our lungs just as the earth breathes through the trees. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. point of view on the past, um, I think it's important to remember the history of mini trucking and that's why we started the old school mini trucking page and it's a bit of why we're doing the journey. You know, people like Sam Jones and people like Pete Cullen and um, people like that, that that sort of brought the scene to Australia and made it what it is um, and I, I think we're still learning. You know, I think we're still growing from that. I think that that's our history. Oh, absolutely. The scene was very different then to what it is now. Nowadays, you know, you wouldn't even know what club people were in, you know, other than the shirt that they're wearing at the time. <laughs> the scene back then, to me, was a lot bigger, more separated. Nowadays, it seems to be a lot tighter. Clubs hanging out with other clubs. Um, yeah, there's no groups in a way, I suppose. It's, yeah. I like the tightness of what it is now. Yeah, definitely. It's an underground car culture in Australia that doesn't get showcased as much as the others and we believe that it's got every right to be a good car scene in Australia. It's hard to describe mini trucking as one word but I like to think of it as an unorthodox family. You don't get to see each other all the time and spend time with each other all the time but when you do catch up at shows or barbecues or cruises it's just like they're your family, you know, they're your good mates. If you're in the, in the local area and you can, you're almost guaranteed that you're going to bump into a mini trucker and you can go down the pub and have a beer and catch up. Don't necessarily have to talk about mini trucks in general, you can just talk about everyday life, work, family, partying and drinking. Back in the day, it was larger and far more people were having a crack at it in their backyard. But I think as time's gone on, it's more about quality over quantity now because you simply can't get away with what you used to be able to get to back in the days with, you know, throwing a, throwing a square notch in and Firestone bag over diff top, stuff like that. You can't get away with that stuff these days. So I think while the scene is smaller, I think it's, its quality is a lot better. The trucks are a lot better and I think the people are now a bit more tight knit because they're all sort of after the same goal self-policing, not letting as much rubbish be on the road like it used to be back in the days, and I think that's made for a better scene. Future of mini trucking, I guess, um, I, I, see, I see it expanding. It's, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. You know, more and more people are getting more involved. Um, I guess, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff, it gets pushed, and you know, it gets a bigger platform and people, more people see it. They, um, they want to get into it. They want to be involved in something bigger than themselves. Um, so I always feel like mini trucking is bigger than individuals, you know. It's not about how cool you are or how cool your truck is, it's about how you fit in that, yeah. There's far less people these days building trucks from scratch, like you'll notice the amount of mini truck shops used to be around back in the day. Like I'm pretty sure Laurie at one stage reckons he'd built 50 trucks, I know at DW we were pumping out a truck once a month and things like that. I know there's not as many shops around dedicated to mini trucks and not many shops at all have actually got trucks in them at all these days. And I think, I think the way the dollar value is gone, you can buy a truck that's already bagged and engineered, so why would you bother building one from scratch for, for a start? Um, but there's sort of two sides, to, two sides to it too. There's, I suppose you call it the underground mini truck movement where people just want to buy their cars, drive the piss out of them, rail them, get them out every weekend, drive them as dailies. And then there's the ones who are pushing the boundaries 
you know, Matt Freeman, Bob and all those sort of guys who went to the next level. So you got two sides of the stone, those who want to step out above everyone and push mini trucking, you know, out of the realm where hot rodders and street machinists think that it's a bunch of kids ruining stuff. And I think they're actually starting to learn now that that's not the way. One word, what is mini trucking to me? I don't think I can give you one word. For me, it's about weekends away with the boys. It's about dragging your shit. It's about enjoying, enjoying what you've built. That's what it is for me. Mini trucking back then for me was, I wouldn't say it was difficult, but you had to know where to go to find the stuff. Back then we'd, we'd say mini truck was roll pan, Altezas, lowered and tempy tire wheels. Building a truck now, it, it is hard work, but I wouldn't say as hard as it was back then when everyone was laser cutting stuff with, or wouldn't even say laser cutting, grinder cutting chassis notches or, like there was still CAD and there was still laser cutting, but the evolution of how easy it is now has made the difference in mini trucking and how fast stuff gets built. Then we would um, air shocks or just cut everything, get as low as we could. But we mainly spent time on buy, like I would find wheels off factory cars, like RAV4 I had on my car and I had to die guy in the centers because they didn't fit. I had a Honda Civic rear bar on the front of my truck, had Hyundai bucket seats, handmade consoles, you know, door trims. Everything was just like, just made out of crap pretty much, whatever you could find lying around. There wasn't much off the shelf stuff. I think even in the States, some of the drop kits were pretty primitive back then, like spacers and washers and just four inch blocks and stuff like that. There wasn't much, and we didn't really have access to it then. Like if you wanted to ship a chrome grill from America, they wouldn't ship it because it's too long to fit on a pallet. So it was, you had to make do what, what you could find. It's quite a lot, I think. It, it was, back in the day, for me, it was just a few boys, a few mates hanging around, building trucks, hanging out and drinking beers, yahoo and sort of thing. Um, now it's, yeah, sort of everyone has their own little clicky group feels. Um, but yeah, it's still, still the same thing, I guess. Everyone's still into building trucks and, and dragging and having fun. And... Me trucking to me would probably be creative expression. We're, I wouldn't say we're black labeled, but we've got like a stigma in the whole custom car culture scene. Like, it's like oh, it's a mini truck. Oh, how can you travel? Like, how can you carry dirt and that? How can you put ladders and that and everything? So being creative, we don't need to really stick to anything. Like your hot rodders, like your, your white walls and your roof chops and everything like that. That's their, that's their thing. So if they step out of their comfort zone, they get a little bit noticed. They're like, oh, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And then you do hear people sort of commonly reference them as me truckers, putting a big TV in a huge like old school sled. Like, yeah, you can do it. I'd do it, but I'm a mini truck. So to me, it's the normal. To everyone else, it's a bit, eh, a bit too out there. So in saying that, where we have got this whole like niche to us, so we can be very creative. And the best thing that I really like about it is you can have, you can own a Toyota, like a 90 small Toyota uh, extra cab, and your mate can own exactly the same truck, year model, even the same kilometers. You guys can be so different. You know, it is a community. You can do anything you want to do. Like you can get a Rodeo and chop the front off it and put a Hilux front on it. You can chuck Hilux bars. You can do whatever you want. There's no, there's no end or limit to what you can do. Um, you know, you go in the Commodore scene or Falcon scene or anything like that. You, you chop the front off a Falcon and you put a Commodore front on it and you're, you know, good as dead. But mini trucks, you know, you can do whatever you want. You've got the freedom and the expression to do what you want. And that's what I really love about it, I guess. Yeah, like, that's what I always love about mini trucks. There's no rules, you can do whatever you want. Um, safety's always a, like, that's what you gotta take care of though. So make the car that you can jump in and drive to Queensland tomorrow. But um, as far as styling, combinations, do whatever you want. That's the greatest thing about the mini truck scene is, a mini truck is not bolt in, bolt out. It's, it's steel, it can be welded, you can customise anything you like. Um, and that's why I like about it, because I can get involved in it um, and be able, to, be able to build things myself and create a bit of artwork. It's just great to be able to create your own art.
best thing about the scene would have to be the friendships and the people I've met along the way and just the common knowledge, everyone just into trucks and wherever it be, you drive just your stock white Hilux with some blocks in it, you know, you've got the same passion to someone that's bagged and body dropped and rolling whatever, like it's always, it's always been the same thing, just, just a passion or just what we're into, it's, well, what you call it, it's a lifestyle, isn't it? Probably 90% of my friends and the people I socialise with are all from the truck scene in some shape, way, form or another. Like, I mean, if it wasn't for mini trucks, I wouldn't have met my, my fiance, wouldn't have met you guys, wouldn't have met, you know, a lot of the boys that I hang out with. It's, it's been a huge part of my life, you know, and really ties us a lot of people together. It's, it's always about the people, but the people, like, the trucks bring it together, but yeah, it's about the people. Mini trucking does bring everyone together, but and obviously the family side of things. Like, I, I can't answer that, man, because I've got, like, I live it, I breathe it, I dream it. It's everything about it's killer. Like, I don't know what to say. It's not just, it's not just attracted one group of people. It's a great, attracted people from all different ages and all different um, parts of the world. You know. Without doubt, the people that I've met through the mini truck scene are the friends that I've got now that I will have forever. And we don't have to go to a mini truck show to hang out. We can hang out with just friends and talk shit about family and whatever. Um, so I think that's probably the best thing that I've pulled out of it. The cars is just an excuse to get together. Without having that input from all these different people, we'd, we'd never, it'd be lost to us, it'd be lost in history. And I guess that's what this project's about, is capturing some of that history so that it isn't lost to us forever. I said, haven't we met before? I swear I've heard that voice ramble on and on about limousines and cheap cigars before. Walk around from under street lights when